Hey guys, this is Nick and this is a small roundup of what you might have missed in the last weeks in the Linux world. I can't cover everything, so I'll stick to the major announcements. Feel free to remind me of what I missed in the comments. 18th of March GNOME 3.32 was released on the 18th of March, with a brand new Advaita theme, as well as a complete revamp of its icons, giving it a whole new look, which is a welcome change in my opinion. Flatback apps now display the permissions they require, and you can check that in the Settings app in the new Applications panel. App menus are now deprecated, and while the app name in the top panel is not going away, it won't host many menu options, which will be moved to the window itself. Other improvements include much smoother animations in GNOME Shell, improvements to GNOME Web, and the terminal now sports a header bar to be more coherent with other applications. Sound settings also have been tweaked to be more legible. Check out my dedicated video to learn more about this new release. 28th of March The Ubuntu 19.04 beta was released. Codenamed Disco Dingo, this new version is based on GNOME 3.32 and benefits from its various improvements, as well as restoring the desktop icons feature by default thanks to a new extension. It still has a ways to go to restore the full desktop icon feature parity, but it's a nice step for those who need it. It also comes with updated versions of Firefox, Thunderbird and LibreOffice, as well as the Linux kernel version 5. The Yaru theme and icons have been tweaked a bit, and it sports the Mesa 19 graphics stack to enable the best performance out of AMD cards. It's stated to release on the 18th of April, and I'll cover everything in a dedicated video when it's out. March 29th Steam released a beta version of its Steam client, fixing some issues with the mouse cursor not showing up in the Steam overlay in some Proton games. This version also fixed a problem where Steam would not download the required version of Proton before starting a Steam Play game, which should make things a bit easier. To access the Steam Beta clients, head to the Settings and in the Accounts tab, enable Participation in the Beta, then restart Steam. April 1st Elementary OS let loose with the announcement of their support of Flatpak in the App Center. While they won't include the FlatHub repo by default, citing security and trust concerns, the App Center will accept Flatpak apps and enable an Elementary OS specific repo for developers willing to ship their apps through this format. It's great news, since the App Center is, in my opinion, the best way to distribute an app and be rewarded for it, and supporting Flatpak is a good step to make sure developers don't hesitate much to publish there, while making it easy to distribute their app on other distributions. Linux Mint 19.2 also was announced, codenamed Tina in honor of Tina Turner, and will focus on improvements to the window manager called Muffin, to make interacting with Windows smoother. The Minty or Mint Y theme will be tweaked as well to improve contrast and legibility, and the update manager will see some big improvements. The Bluetooth applet will also let you disconnect and connect devices in a single click, which is a godsend if, like me, your mouse, keyboard and speakers all connect through Bluetooth to your PC. April 2nd The beta version of Fedora 30 was released, sporting the whole new GNOME 3.32, but also makes DeepNDE and Pantheon, elementary OS's desktop environment, available if you prefer these alternatives. A lot of applications and system components also have been updated. Fedora has steadily been growing in stability and usability and is now one of the best distros out there, especially if you want to experience GNOME at its purest. The addition of other desktop environments and the updates should make Fedora 30 a worthwhile upgrade. It's stated to release the 7th of May, I'll make sure to cover it in more detail then. On the same day, KDE 5.15.4 has also been released, bringing a ton of bug fixes and enhancements to the desktop environment. KDE is quickly shedding its incoherences and simplifying the experience. It is now a very stable, full-featured desktop environment, and users that got burned by the earlier versions would miss out if they did not take a look again. Coherence and simplicity have been greatly improved, especially in the settings, and the desktop uses less RAM and is rock solid, and 5.15.4 is just building a little more upon that. April 3rd Elementary OS kept on with a recap of updates they brought to the distro during March. Among other things, code has seen a few fixes, especially for handling new windows, and better supports Git as well with the ability to switch branches. Keyboard shortcuts have been added to the session menu to quickly lock a session or log out, and the sound indicator now supports more interaction with the microphone, allowing to mute audio output and quickly change output volume just by scrolling. The audio settings panel should now display more hardware so you can select more finely which audio source you want to use. 
these might seem like small improvements, but Elementary OS has been refining its experience since the Juno release, and Pantheon is still one of my favorite desktop environments. Sure, you can't tweak it much, but if you like the workflow it offers, it's a smooth ride all the way. Finally, on the same day, Proton 4.2-2 has been released, improving on Proton 4.2, which was only made available a week ago. This new version is based on Wine 4.2 and includes a new version of DXVK, F-Audio, which should fix quite a few audio bugs, as well as a fix for controller duplication and better support for VR. Proton has seen a lot of improvements, and as always, will be available directly through the Steam settings in the Steam Play tab. April 4th. Those of you that followed my switching from Google video series might have taken a look at Quant Maps. Well, the Quant team just released an update to the service, which now supports itineraries. The service is still in alpha and still has no mobile application, but it's good to see progress being made on that solution. On another note, Microsoft partnered with Canonical to bring Visual Studio Code to the Snap Store. While code was already available as a flat pack on Flathub, this cements the place Snaps have built for themselves on third-party companies' minds. Snap hosts a bunch of programs that aren't available on Flatpak, such as Mailspring, Zenkit or Plex, and more server-related stuff like Docker. While I favor Flatpaks over Snaps, mainly for performance reasons, Canonical seems to be successful at bringing in more companies to their platform, which can only be a good thing for Linux in general, regardless on how one might feel about Canonical or their packaging format. April 6th. DXVK 1.1 has been released, with huge performance fixes for games using the Unreal Engine 4, including Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which should gain 5-10% to more performance while using DXVK. Unfortunately, due to some issues being reported in numerous games, that release has been pulled shortly after its release, while the developer works the kinks out. And that's it for now. Let me know if I missed anything crucial, I'll make sure to improve coverage for the next iterations of these news videos. I leave links to related articles and videos in the description, don't hesitate to check them out. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye!